Hi! Thanks for clicking on Simply Tanika. I am Tanika. If this is your first time here, I am a 46-year-old single woman attempting to have a baby with the assistance of reproductive technology. Yay, science! In my mind when I think of you sometime and I want to spend some time with you. Today we are doing another grocery haul focused on fertility friendly foods. Yay! <laughs> Okay, again, I live in Manhattan, so I don't actually do the hauling myself. Fresh Drive delivers it. Let's get started. All right, the first thing we have is the stuff that goes in the freezer. So I got more of the super greens and super fruit packs from Asai. There we go. You see this has got one and a half servings of... Um, one and a half fruits and veggie per serving, so per packet. So I got the, uh, actually I got two super greens. So I'm doing that, if you watched the other video, you know that I'm doing a super green smoothie in the afternoon. That's my second shake of the day. The individual packs look like that, if you haven't seen that shake video. So each one of these has one and a half servings of fruits and vegetables. Very good for your fertility efforts. So I'm listening to jazz in between uh, recordings. All right, box number one. We have some seltzer water, black cherry. So these, here we go. I mix these with the pomegranate juice. Um, I mix these with the pomegranate juice. With the palm. So I am on cycle day four. Is that right? No. I am on, I'm on cycle day five. And so I started the pomegranate juice on cycle day two when I started my letrozole. I also have walnuts. See my video on uh, natural fertility foods if you don't know about the yumminess that's in walnuts. Um, these are raw walnut halves and pieces. You don't want to have them cooked. You don't want to roast them because it takes away, um, it kills the omega-3 fats, which are great in that. And then I got whole grain spaghetti and couscous. So I, this is new. I was reading about Mediterranean diets being good for fertility. Can you see that? Roasted garlic and olive oil. And I thought this would be a nice way to incorporate it in. And I love garlic and olive oil, so I will be um, preparing couscous. Probably tonight. I'm going to do lamb tonight, so probably with that. Um, yes. And then whole wheat or whole grain. You want to have as much whole grain as possible when you are trying to conceive. Um, this is one simple ingredient. So you don't want to have um, refined grains because they've taken all of the goodness out of it, basically. They've taken the shaft of the wheat and broken it apart and processed out all the rest. So you want it as close to unprocessed as possible. So whole grain. All right, we're moving on to box number two. I don't have my lovely assistant today. She had to work, my daughter. Um, okay, so we're moving on. We've got, I'm always talking about this, the grass-fed yogurt, right? So it's 100% grass-fed, made with whole milk, and it's got uh, blueberries in it. So why is the grass-fed part important? I feel like we've talked about it, but just as a reminder, or if this is your first time, the grass-fed is important because you don't want a cow that has been fed um, refined grains or possibly GMO modified like the corn that's modified to feed them it's not healthy for you and then you um, the cow eats it and then you in turn eat it when you eat anything that comes out of that cow and then the whole milk is important because when you were trying to conceive as you know you were working very hard to balance your endocrine system right so all of your hormones are talking to each other if you get no fat or low fat dairy products the hormones have been modified, and so once you put it into your system, it makes your own hormone system wacky, so it either starts attaching to, like, estrogen starts attaching to things that it shouldn't attach to, so it's it's no bueno for you. So if you can, you want to get 100% whole fat. Now, I know that I'm on my um, weight loss journey and reducing my BMI, but I'm factoring this in as I count my calories, and 
the benefits of it are good because this is a nice way to get my probiotic in addition to the kombucha um, that I also drink. So we have this. We have more spinach, um, again, organic spinach, because you want to not have a lot of pesticides on it. It's a thin leaf. Um, we talked about that in the super, uh, or the natural food video. I'll put, I'll put a link to it in there. But so spinach, I mix these in the smoothies. I also steam it, um, saute it, yummy stuff. We've got broccoli, cruciferous vegetables. I had a lot of broccoli this last cycle. Um, it helps with balancing the estrogen. I think this also was a, a major factor in helping to reduce my FSH, my follicle stimulating hormone. And so I highly recommend as much broccoli as you can get on your um, TTC. Avocado, it's a nice healthy fat. Um, I like the Haas avocado, which would come from Mexico. I know there's avocados that come from Florida. I'm from California, so I'm partial to these. Um, the other ones, the flavor's different. But it's good fat, whichever avocado you prefer the taste of. I got coconut oil, so I'm gonna use this in the cooking. When I did my meal planning, there was a recipe that called for coconut oil. It's also good um, for TTC. There are certain oils that you don't want to have in your food when you are TTC. Coconut oil is a good substitute um, for oils. So I, I'm also, oh, I know what it was. I was gonna make kale chips. So this I, I will use for the kale chips in the oven. They also can have, I don't know if you can see that there, medium to high heat, it can tolerate. So unlike olive oil, which cannot tolerate high heat, it smokes a lot, you have to use it on lower heat. This can do medium to high. So I will be incorporating this more into my cooking. We have celery. Um, this is just good. Again, I put it on, I use it with the hummus. I put um, the almond butter on there. And then last week we also did a little bit of tuna, Cheyenne and I. Um, so that was good as a snack, um, healthy, low fat snack. Um, we have more broccoli. And then the rest is yogurt. All right, let me put these away. stretch. This is our last box. Let's dig in. We have the kale for the kale chips. So or it's organic, it's cruciferous, it's good for balancing hormones. You want to have um, you want to have as many cruciferous vegetables in your diet as possible um, when you are TTC. Brussels sprouts, also in that family, I am going to boil those, or steam them. I will steam them and have those um, as one of the meals for this evening, or for this week. I got two things of hummus. Hummus, Cheyenne really loves it, and they went very quickly um, last week, and so we got two for our meals this week. Carrots, carrots to go in the hummus. If you watch my What I Eat in the Day, you know I was doing the carrots and hummus as my first snack of the day. Pita chips, well, these are whole wheat pita. I'm going to make my own pita chips. Again, so I'll use that coconut oil that I got. Um, that way I know it's not processed oil or some oil that I'm not meant to have, um, and I know that they're whole wheat. And it's just healthier that way, right, than eating the pita chips out of the bag. Though, don't get me wrong, I will eat them. I love, um, oh God, what is her name? It's a girl, is it Sarah's? I can't remember, but I love those pita chips. But I'm gonna make my own this week. Um, organic red tomato. So they put them in this box, I guess, so they don't get squished. Um, let's just see. Ouch. Okay. So there we go. Some nice, fat, juicy tomatoes. Again, you want those organic because the skin is thin, so any pesticides that would have been sprayed on a tomato have gone right through it. Organic, they don't put the pesticides on there, so better for you. As much organic as you can. I know it's expensive, so if you're um, worried about the cost, there are certain things that you definitely should focus on, and tomatoes is one of those, of getting those as organic. Okay, we've got red seedless grapes. That's a no-brainer. I use those as an afternoon snack little snappers.
apples. Um, these are a little smaller than the ones we had last week. These are the Gala Sweet, Snappy, and Aromatic, it says. Um, so those guys, you see that? Yeah. So those are easy to pack and put in a snack. I also think I'm going to freeze some and put them in the smoothie. So I saw someone else doing that where you freeze it and that way you don't need ice in your smoothie. So I think in my morning smoothie, I will chop these up and freeze them, chop them up and put them in the smoothie. The kale I'm going to put in the smoothie as well. That's good in the smoothie. So we have a, enough of it. Um, so that should be good. All right. So we have, here's the salmon, wild coho previously frozen. Can you see that? So again, it's important for all your seafood. You want it to be wild and not farm raised. Why? The farm raised is being fed grain, corn, and other things that it would not naturally eat because it's on a farm. It's contained. The wild are out in the wild and eating what they would naturally eat. So you want to have your seafood be wild. That's with the seafood. So all of your fish, your shrimp, um, lobster. I don't think, I don't know if there's any farm raised lobster, but anything that's coming out of the ocean, you want it to be wild and not farm raised, especially like catfish. I think catfish and salmon. So if you're eating out in a restaurant and you want to ask them because the, the majority of the time they're doing farm raised, you want to avoid eating farm raised if you can. And then this is chicken. Yeah. Farm focus, boneless, skinless, chicken breast. It's organic, fed an all vegetable diet, hatched, raised, and harvested in the US. No animal byproducts or antibiotics ever. So you don't want to have any antibiotics in your poultry. Um, you want it to have had natural food. Anything your food ate, you are then in turn eating, right? It's part of the food chain, uh, if you remember that in school. And then the last thing we have here is grass-fed, 100% local um, rib steak, raised without antibiotics. So there we go. That's another thing you want to look for too. I'm seeing that more and more raised without antibiotics on the um, grass-fed local organic. So there's two in here. So you just want to make sure that it specifically states that it has no antibiotics because it leads me to believe that the the reason they're stating it is because other people are putting antibiotics in there. Could be wrong, but um, I, I like full disclosure on anything that I'm going to put in my body. All right, let's put these away. We are all done putting the groceries away. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed this grocery haul. If you have any questions about any of the food that I purchased or any of the comments that I made about the food, please leave them below. I always get back to the comments right away. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and remember to share it with anyone who might find it useful. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing and remember to click on the notification bell so you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. I am committed to uploading a new video every Saturday and then I'll add additional videos during the week as time permits. All right, thanks for watching. Bye. Baby dust to you all.